Zevela, and Rosa Baliata, and Pelosa Lata, 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 and Zaka Baleta, and Rosa Taliata, and Parando Zakeba, and Posa Gade, and Peloca Zeta, and Rosa Palia, and Parosa Leta. Oh my God, come on, somebody pray. Make a prayer. Make a prayer. Make a prayer. Make a prayer. Lord, don't pass me by. 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 In the name of the Lord. The last prayer I want us to make, and I want you to make it with all of your strength, with all of your, with hunger in your heart. Lord, let your wisdom be revealed in my life tonight. Let your wisdom be revealed in my life tonight. There's a wisdom that you can access that will shift your life to the next level. There's one wisdom from God that you can receive and you, and you will say this date, the 31st, the last day of August 2022, turned around my life for good by one wisdom. Can you place a demand for that? Declare in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, let your wisdom that will shift my life to the next level, let that wisdom be revealed, be revealed. Let the wisdom that will shift my destiny, that will shift my life to the next level, be revealed now, now. Let somebody make that prayer tonight. Le kapalaza lava topaliata. Kabala na bosiata. Empeloko paliata la mahales. Empeloko so paliata. Esele me kopaliakata. Is somebody praying tonight? Let your wisdom, my father, be revealed. Let your wisdom be revealed. Let your wisdom be revealed. Let your wisdom be revealed. Makaboza le katobaliata. Let your wisdom be revealed. The wisdom for my next level. The wisdom for my next level. Let that wisdom be revealed. Let that wisdom be revealed. Let that wisdom be revealed. I open up my heart. Holy Ghost, release that wisdom. 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 Illuminate my life. Illuminate my life. Flood my spirit with light. The light of revelation. The light of divine wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened tonight. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened tonight. Shabala kepalatanaha. Esepeleka topaliata, samala nama kopaliata naha, sameleka balata bahanes, engrogo boloko sopariata. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you glory. Let's raise our hands to God. Father, we bless you. We magnify you. We surrender our hearts to you. Come and speak to us. Come and visit us. We are hungry. We are thirsty. You're always speaking. And tonight is yet another moment. You're about to speak to us. Your wisdom can never be limited. So Father, we surrender and we say yes to your wisdom. Yes to your rebuke. Yes to divine revelation. That will shift our lives to the next level. We are tired of the same things. We are tired of the same status quo. We are tired of the same dimension. We ask and we place a demand for holistic transformation. Holistic transformation. Let our spiritual lives.
be visited tonight. Let our financial lives be visited tonight. Let our academic lives be visited tonight. Every sphere of our lives, business life, be visited tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we place a demand for holistic transformation. Holistic transformation. Holistic transformation. Holistic transformation. Thank you, Lord, for your raising us up to the top of our mountains. Glory and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout the loudest hallelujah. Come on, let me hear that shout tonight. Come on, let me hear that shout tonight. Glory, glory, glory to God. Now I invite you to with joy, with a smile, with a smile in your face. With joy, I want you to walk to as many as you can tonight. Just if they are huggable, hug them. We are a family, right? Let family, let the family now begin to fellowship. Let's fellowship as we go into worship, as we prepare our hearts, build an atmosphere tonight. Amen. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Marada da voso parata. Membra da da boko sota la da. Oh, glory. Come on. Don't, don't just look at your neighbor. Come on, fellowship. 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 Marada de de beko porododo. Come on, fellowship, fellowship. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Now, I want you to come a little bit closer. Hallelujah. Just step to the seat that is next to you. Let me count, let me count. One, two, three, four. I want you to come and occupy three. Occupy the seats that are right here, the black seats. Yeah. Mara de boko soto la bagadevis. Lande le boko sata la bakaya. Are you ready for the for a visitation tonight? Are you set? Are you ready for a visitation? Lift up your hands. Father, welcome as we worship. We welcome you even online right now to the royals that are connected from different parts of this nation. Welcome. Come and have your way. Take over, Holy Spirit. We are ready for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we bless you, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Someone just open your mouth and worship the Lord. He is worthy this evening. We bring him more than a song this evening. In the name of the Lord, just tell the Lord I bring you more than a song today. Oh, I am your worship, O oh Lord. I bring you more than a song. I am your worship, O oh Lord. I have more than a song tonight. Lord, as we worship you, my God. We pray, let the glory go back unto you, my God. Oh, I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song. Today, I brought myself, I am your worship, I have more than a song, and today, I brought myself, I am the sacrifice, I have Today, I brought myself. I am your worship. I have more than a song. I have more than a 
say nothing more. Hey, your Lord, I The congregation say, "You're all that I need. You're all I want. You're all, you're all, you're all. I ever need. Let me this your prayer tonight. You're all I want. Lord, help me know you." One more time, you're all, you're all, you're all I want. You're all I want. You're all that I've needed. You're all I've needed. You're all, you're all I want. Come on, celebrate the Lord. Celebrate the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can give him a better shot. Hallelujah. 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 Are you excited to be in the house? Yes. You know, David said, I better be a doorkeeper. Amen. At the gate of the house of the Lord than to dwell. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited tonight? Yes. We want to say that we have come to give you all the praise. Amen. Take all the glory. Hallelujah. Why don't you welcome your neighbor in the name of the Lord as we praise. Amen. Someone that you haven't said hello to. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can put us uh, the song on, on the projector. Our Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. We know he rescued our sins. He saved us from the miry clay. And now he has set our foot upon the rock. Amen. How many are excited this evening? It is our season of new things. Amen. Is your heart expectant? Are you ready for new things? Higher, put our hands together for Jesus. Hey, his blood has covered our sins. Hey. One more time, you can put your hands together for Jesus. Hey. I know he rescued us all. His blood has covered us. I believe. How many believe that? I believe. One more time, I know He rescued my soul. I know He rescued my soul. His blood, His blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. I believe. One more time, I know. I know. I know He rescued my soul. His blood. I believe, I believe, I believe, hey, my shame, I raise a banner, oh, my God, I stand up the oh, my Redeemer, oh, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Redeemer, yes, he lives, my Redeemer, Oh, 
I'll raise a banner. Oh, my Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer. My Redeemer. Thank you for I know you have a word for me tonight in the name of the Lord he will never ever ever gather his people in vain he will never ever gather his people in vain he has your miracle he has your word tonight just tell the Lord tonight I'm here my God oh Oh, speak to me, Lord. Speak to my heart tonight. Solomon, the rabba, Solomon, the rakanda, rabba, yanda, rabba, yanda. Solomon, the rebo, Solomon, Satalaman, the rabba, zai. Lord, we open up our spirit. Holy Spirit, speak to us tonight. In the name of the Lord. Salamanda Rabazanda Rabayanda Rabaza Rekenda Rabayanda Rabaza Satalamanda Rabaganda Funguan Yosetu Water Salamanda Rabayande Rebos Una Sahili Yesu. Oh, you deserve the glory, Lord Salamanda Rabagan. Oh, we worship you tonight. We join the 24 elders. They cast their crowns and they worship you, Lord. The four creatures, they worship you, Lord. Oh, we cast our crowns tonight. We lift our hands, oh Lord. Lord, we bless your name. Oh, lift up your hands. Let's love the Lord. Let's give Him glory. 
Bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Glorify His name. 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 Come on, let your worship arise. Let your worship arise. In your own words, come on, love on the Lord, love on the Lord, love on the Lord. Father, we love you, Father, we love you. 
Father, we love you. Father, we love you. It's a pleasure to be in your presence. Father, we love you. 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 There's a generation that is loving you tonight. There is a generation that is loving the Lord. There are people loving the Lord tonight. We came to bless the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, love him, love him, love him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Parada da kosa parande kesete kaparada da. Just whisper that name, Jesus. Whisper eight and just tell him, Lord, I love you. Lord, we love you. We came to love you. We came to love you. Come on, declare it to him. Lord, we love you. We love you. He first loved us. The scripture says, even when we were sinners, Christ died for us. There are scriptures that at times become common to us. But in the spirit they are never common. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him. Shall not perish. But have everlasting life. Why don't you love him? For he loved you. He loved you. He loved you. Father, the people that you've shown mercy are here to worship you. The people that you delivered are here to bless your name. What an amazing God you are. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, I want you to lift up your hands. We're going to begin with an offering of a hand clap. We're going to raise our claps as an offering for like 30 seconds. Then after that, you're going to add your shout to it. Can we do that? Now, with all honor, let's lift up our hands together. Now, begin to give the Lord an offering of a hand clap. Come on, come on.
Clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands. Let it be an offering. Let it be an offering. Now add your sound to the offering of praise. Come on, give him glory. Give him glory. 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 We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Jesus mighty name we worship shall three major amens amen 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 hallelujah now look at somebody bless them bless them in the name of Jesus when I tell you bless them speak a word speak a word that will make them smile you, you don't know what they have been going through throughout today you don't know the battles they have fought today. Yes, you don't know who, who quarreled with them. You don't know who stepped on their toes. So go ahead and speak to them something. Speak a word to them. Speak something to them. Come on, speak something to them. Worship us. The Lord bless you. We love 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 you. Powerful time. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody declare, this is my day. Shout louder, this is my day. My heart is glad. This is my month of rejoicing. I decree and declare to this last day of August. Hear the word of the Lord. The end of something is better than the beginning i therefore declare i patrick i am finishing august more stronger more powerful more powerful i declare every miracle every breakthrough that was meant to come my way in the month of August, I declare, come now, come now, come now. I receive my joy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Get ready. Get ready. It's the last day of August. You can receive a message that will change your life. Uh, you believe that? Yeah, you can receive. Some people may be asking, but I haven't received a message that caused me to rejoice. The end of something is better than the beginning. You can receive one message. Maybe it's that, that person. I will be a for two weeks. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Amen. It's such an awesome moment to be in God's presence. And I believe you're set. You're ready for the word of God. You're ready for impartation. You're ready for wisdom. I pray let your heart be open. Let your mind be there. Let your ears be attentive. Attentive to what God is about to speak to us. One wisdom can change your life for good. One wisdom can shift your life for good. And God has that wisdom for you tonight in Jesus' name. Let me see if you visited us for the first time. It's your first time to visit us. Just lift up your hand. Oh, glory to God. Come on. God bless you, Miss Maggie. Let me have some royals. Just warmly welcome them. Come on, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh yes, Cindy, God bless you. Amen, amen. We love visitors. The Lord bless you. Feel welcomed in Jesus' mighty name. And I know God will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As we are standing, as we are standing, I don't want to take much time. Uh, we are already blessed. God is here. The presence of God is here. And greatly, the
the servant of God is right here with the rhema for us tonight. He's not new to some of us. He's such a blessed man, humble, and too loving. Uh, you know, there are people you just connect with and you, you love them <laughs> by force, right? Just by force. And such wisdom, the wisdom that he carries is just amazing. There are people when I see, I want just to be just close around there, around there. There's, there's some measure of wisdom that he carries and I'm blessed. And we are blessed to be receiving from him. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Doing much, leading such a powerful ministry that is helping in mentoring young people all over this nation. And it's such a great blessing in business, in hotel industry. Wow, quite a lot. I may not speak for him, but he's right here to bless us and speak to us. Now with the joy of the Lord, by the grace on this altar, Dr. Julius Subi, we welcome Mr. William Omamo. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap as we welcome him in the royal service. Welcome, sir. Wow. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be with you today. A real honor. And thank you for those of you who have honored this calling to be in the presence of God. Um, as you heard, my name is William Omamo. Um, I fellowship at Exploits Worship Center. I'm part of the men's team. Um, I'm married to one Betty Wairimu. You may know her. I have the privilege of fathering five children. Three are adults like yourself. And um, I'm a hotel professional and an agro-business entrepreneur. Besides that, I wear many hats. But the one that I'm proud of the most is that I serve the Lord and he has blessed me with responsibility. Okay, uh, friends, we are going to be disruptive today. If you came here to sit cozy, you're gonna be in trouble. Yeah, we are going to be disrupted. Do you know who the greatest disruptor was? Jesus Christ. He went into that space and shook things up. Those guys didn't know what was coming. And you, ladies and gentlemen, are called also to be disruptors. So allow me to disrupt you a little bit today. Allow me to get you a little bit uncomfortable. You know, there's some of you guys who have come here for so many times but don't know each other. So what we're going to do today is an exercise, okay? I'm going to count one to four, all right? And for instance, One, two, three, four. 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 Okay? This is what we're going to do. We're going to spend only 15 minutes on a small exercise. If you, if, I hope that you guys know how to do exams. I've had so many goodies. I've got sweets. I've come with my book. I'm an author. And um, I'll be issuing that book, five of them. I hope that, uh, or hope that you're one of them. So you have to pay attention, practice good listening skills, yes, and act quickly. So there's a team that constitutes number one. Okay? That team number one is going to sit here. What you're going to do, you'll assemble here, turn your chairs and sit in a circle. Okay? Team number two will sit here. All right? Assemble, turn your chairs and sit in a circle. Team number three over there and number four over there. Okay? 
Can we do that in 60 seconds? Let's go. 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48. Excellent. Well done. I think team number four are shaky shaky. Okay. Now, the first thing you have to do, yes? This is part of the test. Get to know each other by name. Get to know each other by name. Hundred and twenty seconds and counting down. Ninety seconds. Sixty seconds. Thirty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time out. Please go and join. Join uh, team number two, and join team. Join team number three, and you join team number. Team number one. Okay. Okay, so what we're doing next is this. Pay attention, listening is a skill. I am going to give you a sheet of paper. I hope that amongst you, Ikomutu na kalamu. Okay? I'm going to give you a sheet of paper. On this paper, it has a question. All right? You discuss that question. You come up with the points of that question. In seven minutes, you will choose a scribe, okay? The person you've chosen as a scribe will come and answer that question at the podium, all right? So, this is the sheet of paper for, for this team. There's another one. Read the question, discuss, raise your points, and we will call you up. You have... Please make sure you choose a team name. You have seven minutes from now.
five minutes? Three minutes. We have a team that has finished. They think they know it all. <laughs> huh? We'll see about that. Okay, uh, one and a half minutes left. That's. Uh, 120 seconds, let's give you two minutes, yeah. Sixty seconds. Thank you very much. Time is up. Stop what you're doing. And please, where you're sitting, just turn your seats to face the front. Where you're sitting, just turn your seats to face the front. So, let's ask each other a few things. This is team two, three. Huh? Team three. Please tell me two members of your team. Uh, two members of my team. There is uh, Caesar and Monica. Caesar, Caesar, Monica, where are you? Okay. That was easy, isn't it? Huh? Okay. Hi. Please tell me four members of your team. Clarice, Maggie, Pam, Sam. Well done. Very good. Now at the old rehearsing, Nakuja Uko, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, tell me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine members of your team. Yeah, yeah. Helen, Cynthia, as you put up your hands as he goes along. Helen, keep your hand up. Helen, Cynthia. Salim is who? Eric. Eric. Eric, put up your hand. Good. Well done. Good attempt. Very good attempt. Okay, let's go to this team. Um, yeah, madam, tell us uh, four members of your team. Patrick. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen. Spencer, uh, uh, <laughs> Douglas. Douglas, I had said Patrick. Uh, yeah. You see, <laughs> Patrick can't be included, but anyway, there you go. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. We have all uh, tried to do this exercise. What we're going to do, like I told you, please identify your scribe, the person who took the notes. And we're going to go vice versa. So, Maggie, in all your pride, come, bring the person who is ready to tell us what you were, talk what you were told to uh, discuss and the points that you've raised. You have 15 seconds to come. 
Thank you. So, okay. um, our question was: uh, the Bible says money can grow wings to fly away. Giving ten examples, how is this true? Okay. <laughs> okay. The Bible says that money can grow wings to fly away. Giving ten examples, how is this true? Or how possible can this be? So, money can grow wings by wrong investment. Money can grow wings by not saving, uh, by being extravagant. Um, money can be robbed. Money can be auctioned. Uh, you can be in debt. Unplanned giving. Uh, borrowing haphazardly. Gambling. And also impulse buying. What was your team name? She didn't come up with a name. That, that team that was so chop chop, no name. Oh dear. But anyway, go and share the sweets. If there's any more required, let me know. Let's have uh, team uh, number three, please. Okay. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, we were discussing the ways a Christian can attract devouring spirits, uh, and we began. Um, in our group, uh, the name of our group is the Eagles, and uh, we were discussing the ways a Christian can attract, or the ways that Christians attract devouring spirits. Uh, first, we began by understanding what is the meaning of devouring spirits, and uh, we agreed that these are spirits that destroy as you try to make success or achieve success. So these are spirits that come to destroy as you're working hard. So the following ways are the ways which um, a Christian can attract devouring spirits. Way number one is through sin. Number two, it's disobedience. Number three is not spending enough time with God. Number four is not tithing. Number five, foundational errors. Uh, if you can take it deeper, we can say that uh, ungodly foundations. Number six, evil altars. Number seven, agents of darkness. Number eight, dishonor to authority. Number nine, curses. Number ten, baseless disagreements. And finally, number eleven, ungodly music. Thank you. Excellent. Give it up. Well done. Awesome. Let's get team number two, please. Team number two. Um, praise God. Amen. This is group number two. And we called our team Prosperity Team. And our question is, what are the biggest threats to your prosperity? Sorry. Yes. So our question is, what are the biggest threats to your prosperity and stability as a young adult? Number one is fear of unknown, uh, inconsistency, poor time management, misidentity, procrastination, uh, bad influence, prayerlessness, inferiority complex, uh, demonic oppression, we have lack of vision, poor financial planning, and faithfulness and lack of mentorship. Well done. Do you guys agree? Do you guys agree? Great. So let's have the last team, team number one. Thank you. Two hands. Praise God. Okay. Uh, our question was, as Christians, how can consumption of marketing and advertising materials be your greatest obstacle in spiritual growth? I repeat, how can, a, how can as a Christian, how can consumption of, of marketing and uh, advertising material be your biggest obstacle in spiritual growth? So our points were as follows. Um, we, we look at social media first, can be an obstacle to your spiritual growth. Maybe you are using Facebook, Instagram 
Twitter, TikTok as your marketing, um, you, can, you, you, can, you can lose focus and start viewing other things uh, that are not relevant to your spiritual growth. And then now, uh, at times, um, social media can also be time consuming. So you will use a lot of time in the same thing, uh, just advertising and uh, looking at other things other than just marketing. Then it can be addictive. So as you continue marketing for more and more and more and getting more clients, you are likely to be, to be addicted to the social media. And then uh, we, we look at this code. At times, you, you may be working in a company where you, you are allowed to, to wear a specific kind of dressing code that is not per se relevant or per se good to your religion. Maybe you, you are a girl and you are asked to wear a booty short, for example, it may not be, be according to what you believe. So that can also bring a lot of, a lot of affection to your spiritual growth. Then uh, the people you interact with, you can easily be influenced by the people you are interacting with. So bad influence can also be a point. Dishonesty, some marketing strategy, you have to be dishonest so that to attract more customers, that one also can also lead to your, your spiritual growth deteriorating. Then another one is inferiority. As you continue working and as continue, if you don't believe in yourself, um, you are, you, you, you are, it can really affect your spiritual growth because you are easily influenced to the bad, bad side of the people because you don't have a stand. Then the other one is um, visual. Sometimes uh, we, we see so many things and uh, your visuality can easily affect, what you see can easily affect your, your, your spiritual growth. Because if you, you only see, kind of, I don't know how to put it, but if you only see the, the, the negative side, naked people, maybe what, it will really bring bad images in your, in your spirit, which will affect your spiritual growth. Then another one is, um, it can be also, as you continue marketing, it can affect your uh, memory. In that, uh, <laughs> uh, listen to my points, it has some, uh, some material. Uh, it, <laughs> it can affect your memory. If you're not reading the scriptures, and if you're not, uh, doing anything spiritual, you are just you are just marketing, marketing 24-7. You are likely to forget how to pray. You can also forget how to even to read the word. You can forget scriptures. You can forget your moral behavior. Uh, I've, I've wrapped up. My, my last point is that one of moral behavior. As you continue, uh, as you continue interacting with people, your moral behavior can be influenced by your people so that when you believe in a certain thing, then with, with, with time, it can be rubbed away if it is not making more profit. Maybe you are selling insurance company, you are marketing insurance, for example, I give an example as the last one. If uh, speaking the truth does not, does not bring a lot of money, you are likely to be influenced to, to change your moral behavior and speak wrong. That's my Well done, well done. So, um, I say well done to all of you. Each one of you in your respective groups had an input. Um, and it's great the points that we have raised on these uh, four questions that we asked, um, we asked you to interrogate. I believe that many of us here have spoken about the symptoms. So we want to go a little bit deeper on these issues, on these points that we raised. The theme and the topic of today is more money, more poverty. Now, I don't know if you guys can see me or if you want to get to a position where you can see me. I'm going to pretty much stay up here. I could walk down a couple of times, but I'll pretty much stay up here. So if you're comfortable there, we are now going to indulge in the word, and you can get ready. So um, more money, more poverty. 
Can we get uh, Proverbs 25, 28, please? This is our anchor verse on the Amplified Version. Let's read it together. He who has no rules over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. He who has no rules over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. I have another version that I'm going to read to you here. Like a city that is broken down and without walls, leaving it unprotected, is a man who has no self-control over his spirit and he sets himself up for trouble. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you on this awesome, awesome last day of August. Thank you for how you have blessed us throughout this month. Thank you, Lord, for how your word that we have heard every day and that we have read and that we've internalized throughout this month of August has inspired us, it has encouraged us, it has given us insight and grown us. Today is no exception. We call upon you, we call upon the Holy Spirit to inspire us with this word. May we grow from it, may we uh, understand it and be able to run with it that we can inspire others with it. To the glory and honor of your throne, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's go. Everybody spoke at length about this and about that and about this and that, but I didn't hear self-control too often, and I didn't hear about this discipline. All the things that you were trying to talk about here rotated around discipline and self-control. Now, discipline is one of the cornerstones of Christian faith. It is a virtue founded on biblical principles. What we're going to do in the time that I have with you, we're going to focus on Hebrew 12. And uh, let's look at Hebrew 12, verse 11. And we will dwell pretty much in Hebrew 12. So, it says here, For the time being, no discipline brings joy, but seems grievous and painful. But afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. A harvest of fruit which consists in righteousness, in conformity to God's will, in purpose, thought, action, resulting in right living and right standing with God. That's discipline. However... You know, the world has turned this discipline to be a word that we despise. We despise it. The world's view on discipline is punishment. You know, I don't know about you millennials. By the way, let's talk about this a little bit. Hands up if you're a millennial. Hands up if you're a millennial. Let me just see those hands up. And now everybody's going to put up their hands. <laughs> listen. Listen and learn. A millennial is any of you or any of us who is born round and about the year 1980. 1979, 1980. Huh? Up until the year 2000. 2002, around there. You're a millennial. So, hands up, millennials in the house. Bless you. You're awesome folks. So, I'm speaking to millennials, and I really honor millennials because you're an awesome breed of human beings. Now, you know, when, in, when I was growing up, this word discipline we would identify it with the kiboko. Have you guys been kibokoed? Huh? See, when you think about discipline, you think about the kiboko. Because we were trained in our minds that discipline identifies with punishment. But the Bible doesn't teach us this. The Bible teaches us that um, discipline is at the epicenter of prosperity and success. As you have seen, in some of these verses that we're going to see, discipline is at the epicenter of your prosperity and your success. 
Um, you see, when God talks about discipline, and sometimes when God decides that he's going to take action to correct a flawed behavior, it is a correction. It is not a punishment. But we people, we consider it a punishment. But that is not the case. Can I have NIV Hebrew 12, 5 to 6, please? Hebrews 12, 5 to 6 in NIV. It says here, And you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My sons, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. Go on to number six, please. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as his son. Isn't that awesome? We're disciplined by the Lord out of love. Today's theme um, seeks to explain that without self-discipline, without self-discipline, acquiring wealth will lead you to poverty. Without self-discipline, the wealth you acquire will lead you to poverty. You heard some of the points about what makes money fly away. All of most, in fact, all of those points can relate to self-discipline and self-control. Discipline and self-control go together. It is impossible to be disciplined without self-control. I have a question. Who can tell me the nine fruits of spirit? Raise your hand. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Nine of them. Let's go. He's got it? Excellent. Well done. So, the last one is self-control. Self-control is seriously important. Galatians 5.22. Can we uh, put that on? Um, yeah, there it is. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which has presence within accomplishing, is love, joy, peace, patience, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Go on. Any more? Okay, self-control should be there. So, self-control is a very integral part of even how you accomplish gentleness, how you accomplish joy, love, peace, forbearance. Many times, in order for you to have peace with somebody who has hurt you, you need to apply self-control. Self-control is the foundation of how you apply the Spirit of God in your life. Um, you know, if we take COVID-19 as, as an example, COVID-19 saw the world being affected by COVID-19. But each nation behaved and responded to the control measures that governments put out in different ways. And if you do a research of the countries where the general population were arrogant and opposed those uh, controls that the government put in place, you'll find that those are the countries that had the highest casualties and the highest fatalities. The United States, United Kingdom, Spain, um, Italy. In Africa, it was South Africa that had the highest number of uh, casualties and, and uh, fatalities. Interestingly, China, where this disease came from, they had nine million, no, 900,000 cases of this disease, but 5,000 deaths. In fact, it was 5,226. Kenya had 333 to date cases. Do you know how many? 
casualties, fatalities? 5,625. China is a nation of 1.2 billion. That must tell us something. Were we really as disciplined as we could have been? Yeah? We heard the stories. We saw politicians, yeah, having parties. Huh? We saw a great level of indiscipline. And you have this indiscipline. You get sick. You're taken for uh, medical attention. And you're the same person who will now criticize your government for not having those resources. Because of lack of discipline and self-control. Today, many of you millennials, because hmm, now you know you're millennials, isn't it? Many of you, you millennials are struggling with indiscipline. You're struggling with poor judgment and self-control. And as a result of this, this struggle has brought on major attributes to depression, relationship troubles, Alcoholism, drug abuse, sex and gambling addiction, mental illness, domestic violence, criminality, suicide, and even premature death. This issue of indiscipline and lack of self-control. You know, we had a conversation earlier about marketing and advertising. Contrary to biblical teachings, contrary to what we learn from the Bible, we consume more on social media. We consume and are taking more that comes on social media and the internet of things. And these are the corridors and the avenues and the channels that promote self-entitlement, intolerance, individualism, sexual immorality, these platforms promote get-rich-quick schemes, gambling, and corruption. So if you really review those points that you had come and that you had spoken about, those points that you had mentioned, where is the real problem? Where is the real problem? You know, it doesn't take too much to, often you see these young millennials like yourself in flashy cars, living large. Yeah, you see them zooming with these noisy cars. Yeah, you see them today. Then the next day, you see them. These guys are in rags. They're tattered. They're struggling. They're in pain. And if you don't see them, they're dead. So we shouldn't really ask what happens to these people. It's the absence of self-control. The word of God today is in conflict. In conflict. The word of God is counter-cultural. The philosophies of the world, you know, the cultures of the world, world the word of God is in conflict with this. I mean, give an example. The Word of God promotes self-discipline. But world standards promote indiscipline. Isn't that true? Yeah. So God is promoting and growing you to, be, to have self-discipline. And then we go and consume huh, material that helps us and pushes us to have indiscipline. Remember that the world and God cannot mix. God and the world is like oil to water. Um, James, could we have uh, James 4, verse 4? Uh, could we have the NIV version? It says this, you adulterous people, 
You don't know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God. Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. You can't have the two. You can't have your cake and eat it. You have to choose one. Are you going to choose the word that is passing? The world that is passing? Or are you going to choose God who is eternal? So where do you guys, where are you? Each individual, each of you, have you asked yourself with this information, where do you stand? You know, millennials are an amazing uh, creation of God. Many of you have found great way, innovative ways to become successful. Some of you work for companies and are about to become globe-trotting uh, company executives. Some of you have creative entrepreneurship businesses that is likely to take you to the next level of success. And this is most probably because as millennials, you are very independent-minded. You are pro-justice. You have a gender orientation. You're enterprising. You are a very different breed. You guys were made to succeed. You are made to succeed. But there's a problem. There's this hunger for worldly success. It is so, you are so hungry for it that you're ready to do everything beyond you're ready to get that success by all means necessary, even at the expense of discipline and self-control. That is the sadding irony of your success. So the flip side of your definite success in life, the flip side is that great success amongst millennials is leading to great pain and destruction. Your great success is also leading to great pain and destruction. Now, you know, I've been a young person. I've been your age. So I can tell you a little bit about my personal experience with uh, indiscipline. Um, and as I tell you this, I want to vouch that the solution to what I was going to tell you and to what, to what you feel and to what you experience about lack of self-control, the solution is in the word of God. It's a lasting solution. There are many get-quick fix solutions, but the word of God is a lasting solution. You know, I, in my youth, I wasted my youth chasing after fantasies. Some of you may be chasing after fantasies today. In other words, you have not defined your purpose. So you're shooting in the dark. You're going here and there. I was like you. And along the way, because I didn't have solid identity, because I didn't really know who I was, along that way, I destroyed many lives. The people who were close to me were destroyed until I even destroyed myself. I exhausted my capital of favor in reckless living. You know, there's this parable that identifies with my life. And that's a parable in Luke 15, the prodigal son. That is my story. That is my story. I took my inheritance and I went amok and I spent it all. Thank God for his inextinguishable grace. Because just when I was hours away from physical death, after years and years of abusing my mind and body, just when the enemy was about to win. When I was full of drugs, 
full of alcohol, depressed, struggling with poor health. That night, when the enemy came for me, you know, I was taking sleeping pills to sleep. On top of sleeping pills, I would take huge volumes of alcohol, but no amount of alcohol, no amount of sleeping tablets would allow me to sleep because that is the degree of pain I was in. But Jesus, that night, he just appeared. He appeared before me. He just rocked up. I was sitting alone in my room. I had read a bit of the Bible because I was figuring out that, man, huh, if I can't do it for myself, maybe Jesus can do it for me. And Jesus appeared. And he said, William, I've come to save you. I forgive you. Take my hand. And I took his hand. And he said, don't look back. Now I'm going to show you how you're going to live the rest of your life for me. You know, that day was the 23rd of October, 2014. By that grace I received that day, I'm alive today. Nothing and no one could have given me breath the next day had it not been for the mercy of Jesus Christ. So, you know, since that day, God has been working on my character because when God wants to save you, he works on your character. It may not be a good experience, but because he loves you so much, as you saw, we, 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 we read earlier, God slowly transformed me through life circumstances that require discipline and self-control. If God is going to do something in your life, he's going to put you in a circumstance that requires you to apply that thing. Yeah? For me, it was discipline and self-control. These are the two character traits that I really want you guys to embrace. Besides anything else. Today, I want to counsel you that self-discipline, yes, will save you great troubles and even save you premature death. And this self-discipline will ensure that you prosper and succeed. So as I conclude, I would like you to make um, a lifestyle. I would like you to take notes around these points that I'm going to mention, seven of them. These are attributes of discipline and self-control. These will certainly do well for you. The first one, this attribute of discipline and self-control. Point number one is endeavor to be a friend of God and seek to live by his word. I'll repeat. Point number one, endeavor to be a friend of God and seek to live by his word. You know, in his word, you'll find peace to live in a world that is at war with itself. This world is at war with itself. That peace you're going to get is going to come from God and from his word. Number two, be patient with yourself and others. Life is a marathon. It's not a sprint. You guys have a good 70, 80 years ahead of you. Pace yourself. Bank on God's counsel and strength through the power of the Holy Spirit that is given to those who freely profess that Jesus is Lord. And today, I am very hopeful that one or two of you who have not done it, today you will profess that Jesus is Lord. Number three, be a good listener to instruction. Be a good listener to instruction. Desire a teachable heart. 
Ensure you are surrounded by people who challenge you to be a better person. Not forgetting that amongst those people, there must be mentors to rebuke you. Be sure that in your list of friends you have mentors. And don't forget, we all know this, bad company corrupts and corrupts absolutely. Number four, be humble before God from who you receive mercy so that you too be humble and merciful to others. I repeat, be humble before God from who you receive mercy so that you too be humble and merciful to others. God's love is founded on mercy. Number five, these attributes to self-control and discipline. Number five, hold to a mindset of diligence and integrity. Hold to a mindset of diligence and integrity. Stand firm on good morals and principles of righteous living. Stand firm on those morals. Good morals and principles of righteous living. Number six, this is an important one. Be contented with your life circumstances, with your current life circumstances. Be content. I repeat, be contented with your life, current life circumstances. You know, when you're contented, it will protect you from the spirit of envy, the spirit of greed, and the spirit of lust. Be contented. Do this knowing that good things come from God at the appointed time. God will give you the good things, but at the appointed time. So be contented with your circumstances today. And finally, embrace a servant heart. Embrace a servant heart. You know, we are all called to serve humanity with our gifts, our talents, our skills, and our abilities. We're all called to serve. You will be blessed to be a blessing. But here's something that please pay attention to. If your vision for your life doesn't involve serving people who can give you nothing in return, let me repeat, if, your vi if the vision you have for your life doesn't include serving people who can give you nothing in return, that vision is not from God. Think about where you're going. That vision is not from God. So as I conclude, I would like us... Um, to just look at this verse, Matthew 22, 27 to 39. Uh, let's have an NIV version. Matthew 22, 27 to 39. Okay, I'm going to read it. It says this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, one significance in this verse is that to love your neighbors, you must first love yourself. So therefore, as I conclude, I say to love yourself, you must respect yourself. To respect yourself, you must discipline yourself by exercising self-control. Thank you.
Wow. Aren't you blessed? Now lift up your hands wherever you are. Just thank God for that wisdom. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you the praise. Come on, whisper something to God. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. There's one thought that has come into your heart. And that's the thought you needed to hear for a change of your destiny. Life will never have a meaning without discipline. This is the ability to govern your life. Govern your passions. Govern your desires. Put a limit to some things. Put boundaries to some things. Set things in your life that will bring value. That will increase value in your life. Let's thank God. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful. You've invested too much in our lives. Oh my goodness. You've invested too much in our lives. We don't want to end up as beggars. Yet there is wealth that is locked up within us. We don't want to end up as beggars because we missed on the place of discipline. Paul says, I discipline myself every day. I put my body into discipline so that lest when I preach to others, I am not disqualified. Father, I ask, let that grace, that spirit of discipline come upon our lives. Discipline in prayer. Discipline in the word. Discipline in finances. Discipline with the time that you've given us. All of us, we have 24 hours. But Father, we need grace to discipline our lives. That the 24 hours will make a meaning in our lives. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. You're here and you're not born again. And you're saying, I want to begin there. You're here, you're saying, I want to restore my life to God. I want to amend my ways with God. Let me see by the show of hand. You hear you saying, I want an impartation of the grace of discipline. Discipline. Discipline in my life. There are some people, if you ask yourself, the distance between where you, you should have been now and where you are is discipline. The distance where you should have been now and where you are, that distance, that gap is the issue of discipline. Some of us are supposed to be high, high in your mind the matter of faith, finances, so many things in our lives. But discipline has hindered us. Let, let all, all of us stand up. As I ask Mr. Mamo, just come and re release that grace for discipline. For discipline. God has helped you. You're doing quite a lot in the marketplace. 
spiritual things. I want you to pray for us to receive grace for discipline. That in the next five years to come, we will say, I made some decisions in my life. Discipline decisions. And that's why I'm how I am today. Sir, please. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's a wonderful thing that the grace of God cannot be exhausted. It is inexhaustible. His grace, His love, His mercy is inexhaustible. So even wherever you are today, in your situation, and where you want to be tomorrow, and where you want to be in the future, God can take you there. He alone can take you there. And he can take you there in a way you would never imagine possible. But God wants us to embrace his standards, not the world's standards, his standards that he has set for us that will outlive us, that will outlive generations until the very end of time, unchanging in the wisdom, the wisdom that gives us prosperity, success, and long life. Let God be at the center of that wisdom. Heavenly Father, we come before you at the end of this awesome, awesome session. This time that you took to speak to us, to inform us, to open our minds to your great love, to open our minds to your great mercy, and to your inexhaustible grace. Father, you know each one of us personally. You have a personal relationship with us. You know our needs. You know our wants. You know our areas of struggle. And you are the God who can give us exactly what we need, Almighty Father, to, to move along and to move ahead. We thank you, Lord, that you center your word around discipline and you affirm it as a fruit of spirit that we who have professed that Jesus is Lord have received. Father, today we pray that the spirit of self-control will work richly in our lives, that the spirit that you give us to direct us will point us in the right direction, that the spirit that you've given us to counsel us will give us the wisdom when we're confronted with the ways of this world. We choose you, Jehovah. We choose you against the world because we know that we can't have the two of them. We choose you. And even as we choose you, Lord, we choose you knowing that we fall short of your glory. We know that, Lord, it is only by grace that we can embrace and have joy of salvation. So, Lord, may your grace be sufficient. May your grace be sufficient even to strengthen us to resist that which the world brings to us, to corrupt us. May your grace be sufficient to give us the wisdom to walk away from those things that will set us apart from you. You are a merciful God. Jehovah, you know us. You know our places of weakness. Remember mercy, Lord. Remember mercy upon us. Let your grace, Almighty Father, fill us this evening, O God. Let your grace, Almighty Father, prevail upon us and awash us, Almighty Father, with a zeal for self-control. For this fruit of spirit will strengthen us, will inspire us with joy, with love, with peace, with forbearance, with gentleness, with kindness. Yes, this self-control will give us the transformation we so much want, Lord. We come before you with our thanksgiving again for this month of August. So as we walk into a new month, O oh Lord, may we have the power, may we have the grace of self-discipline and the grace of self-control 
to serve you, Almighty Father, with integrity, with diligence, with humility, to serve you, O God, to be willing, Almighty Father, to be used by you, O Lord. May you give us, Almighty Father, the strength that is in your spirit to live in fear and love of you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us first. Thank you, Lord, for loving us in a way that we cannot measure. Lord, we come back to you, Almighty Father, with our brokenness, even declaring by your word where you say you will not despise a broken and a contrite heart. Yes, our Father, may your mercy be upon us, O Lord. And may you give us, Almighty Father, the ability and opportunity to be joyful in the coming months, in this last quarter. Do that new thing that only you can do, O God. Even as we come before you with ready hearts, with teachable hearts, do that thing that only you can do. And may it be seen that the Lord God has done it. And may you allow us the opportunity to celebrate you, to speak and proclaim you before men that indeed you're the God of great wonder. No one comes close to you. You have no rival and you have no equal. So we thank you, Lord, for the gift of self-control. And we thank you, Almighty Father, that you give us this spirit because you're for us and not against us. We commit to you our lives. We commit to you our all, that you may indeed have your way. As we go into the new month, Almighty Father, remember our church. Remember, Almighty Father, our leadership. Remember the plans that we have, O oh God. The plans of visitation, the plans of even the conference. Father, Lord, may your grace be upon our plans. Jehovah, may you choose to use us, even as we declare, Almighty Father, that by your grace we will embrace self-control that the glory, the praise, the honor, the exaltation may remain upon your throne. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, this is powerful. We are beginning a new month tomorrow. I want to charge you don't begin this new month just anyhow. No. You realize it's only four months and another whole year will be gone. Don't begin this month just anyhow. Sit. If it's tonight, if it's tomorrow morning, in the course of the day, sit and look at your life. Which area of my life needs discipline for a next level? And then tomorrow is the 1st of September. Begin a new walk of discipline. And by December, I believe everyone will have a tangible miracle, breakthrough of divine progress in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Somebody say, wow. Look at your neighbor, tell them your life will never be the same again. Today marks a difference in your life. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you to prepare your offering uh, before I give uh, Mr. Mamo. He has some gifts to present to some people. I don't know how he's going to do it. Oh, I already got one. Glory to God. Yes, sir. So, this, uh, this prayer journal that I brought today is, uh, it's a journal that is inspired by the Psalms. It is supposed to be a journal that you interact with in your prayers. It guides you with revelations and it also encourages you to learn how to make revelations using the Psalms. There are 150 revelations here and you will by the grace of God also have 150 revelations about yourself, about your family, about your circumstances, about your career, about your country 
and about your church. So, I would like to give these to the four speakers. The four guys who came up. Please come up. The four of you. There you go. It is a personal document. You cannot share it. You interact with it personally. Who was, is it with you? Excellent. There you go. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. You know, I, I didn't know this is how it was to end. Because I was trying to persuade some people, just become the, the scribe, become the scribe. <laughs> but see what the scribes have received. Praise the Lord. Amen. So prepare your offering, prepare your offering. Let's give to the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Online church, the Lord bless you. We love you. In the name of Jesus, honor the Lord. Just prepare your offering wherever you are. Let's sow into God's work. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Liberty, come. Come, come, come. I want you to bless what is behind there. In the name of Jesus. Liberty and, and Lee's have prepared some refreshments for us. Come on, let's go ahead and celebrate them. Yes, all right. Go, go ahead, come, come. Let's give, let's give the, the off, offering baskets are right here on, the, on my left and also on my right. Be free. Uh, those that are giving through Pebio, the, the details are right there on the screen in the name of Jesus Christ. Please help me usher the man of God in the office your tithe if you have your tithe please don't eat your tithe yes if god has blessed you please package your tithe come and give in the name of jesus father i bless your son i cover him with the blood of jesus i release grace father rebuke the devourers from his life in the name of jesus receive grace for new level in your business in your finances in jesus mighty name Father, is your time? Yes. Yeah, Father, I bless you, your son. I cover him with the blood of Jesus. I release grace. I rebuke the devourers. And I pray, open the windows of heaven and release a blessing that will overflow in his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Just an announcement. Glory. us but soon we'll be going back to the campus 